All right, well, if you have your Bibles, let's open those up. Romans chapter 11. Romans chapter 11. We'll be looking at verses 19 through 24. And uh, we're looking at God's faithfulness to the Jewish nation. And uh, we're really coming to the end of the first part of the book of Romans, chapter 1 through 11, which is about doctrine. Um, you know, I know in the body of Christ today, there's kind of, it's kind of in vogue a little bit. You know, it's kind of like a popular idea to be like, you know what, I don't really, I don't really need to learn like what the Bible actually says. I just kind of read it and just get it as I want. No, 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 it doesn't work like that. Like the God of the Bible, God uh, doesn't change based on you and I and how we act and how we think. Uh, God is God. Uh, the Bible tells us in Hebrews, he is the same yesterday, today, and, and he'll be the same forever. Um, and, and the Bible affords us the opportunity uh, to not, uh, you know, Satan is the one that uses the Bible to try to, to get his point across. You know, he, he tempted Jesus in the wilderness. He used scripture, you know, so just because somebody uses scripture uh, doesn't mean they're from God. Uh, Satan uses scripture. Uh, the problem is Satan used scripture out of context. Um, he, didn't, he didn't get the main point of the scripture. And it's important for us to realize God is God, and the Bible is our opportunity to learn from God. Not to teach God, not to tell God what he should do or how he should be, but to learn who he is and for him to teach us what to do and how we should be. You know, it's the word understanding. It means to, to be under him. You're not going to have wisdom. You're not certainly going to have understanding, real understanding, if you don't come under the Lord and humble yourself and say, Lord, change me. You're not wrong. I'm wrong. You know, you're not unholy. I'm unholy. I need to change. And, and God's word is the opportunity to do just that. And here in Romans chapter 11, Paul's speaking by the Spirit about the Jewish nation. We'll pick it up. Verse 19, you will say then, and he's talking about how we're wild olive branches. If you're a Jewish believer listening, then you're not a wild olive branch. But for those of us, I'm Italian, you know, that, that, that have been saved. Uh, we're wild olive branches grafted in uh, to the tree, to the root. Uh, God began uh, the gospel in the church through the nation of Israel, through the Jewish people. You say, no, he didn't. The Jews reject Jesus. No, Jesus was Jewish. Paul, the apostle who was writing this, was Jewish. Peter, right? We, we often think, oh, these were, these were guys just like us. And they were. Jewish people are just like us, just so you know. You know, if you took off all their outfit and the curls and they got a regular haircut and put on a T-shirt and some jeans, you wouldn't know the difference. Big shocker, right? It's the same. Verse, verse 19, you will say then branches were broken off. Listen, that I might be grafted in. Verse 20, well said, because of unbelief they were broken off. And you stand by faith. Do not be haughty, but fear. You and I, we should be like, well, I'm a Christian. I'll do whatever I want, right? Uh, no. Paul says, that's a bad attitude. Don't do that. Do not be haughty, but fear. Verse 21, for if God did not spare the natural branches... He may not spare you either. Verse 22, therefore consider the goodness. So God is good. God is love. God is gracious. Consider the goodness and severity of God. The fear of the Lord, Proverbs says, is the beginning of wisdom. So we need to realize God is good and he loves us. But man, God is not to be trifled with. God's word isn't to be twisted. It's not about God and he revolves around me, but it's he's at the center. We revolve around him. Consider the goodness and severity of God on those who fell. Severity, but towards you, goodness. If you continue in his goodness, otherwise you also will be cut off. Verse 23, and they also, if they do not continue in unbelief, will be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in. Again, listen, when a Jewish person stops their unbelief saying, no, 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 Jesus is not Messiah. Jesus is not Messiah. Jesus is not Messiah. I mean, they got to really work. The Jewish person has to really work to, to reject Yeshua as Messiah because he's fulfilled all their prophecies. You know, they have to not read their book, not read what it says. But when they stop their unbelief, man, they're grafted in. For God is able to graft them in again. Verse 24, for if you were cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, 
and were grafted contrary to nature into a cultivated olive tree, how much more will these who are natural branches be grafted into their own olive tree? Paul's here saying, listen, you and I were grafted in. Do you know they can take a branch uh, from a tree, they can graft it into a, to a, to a, to a trunk or to the stem of a tree, and they can get that to actually become one. Uh, it's amazing. Maybe look it up online. It's an amazing process. Paul here is saying that's what you and I, that's what God did with us. We were wild olive branches, but he grafted us in to, to the work he began through the Jewish nation. And we need to not be haughty or prideful about that. Father, we pray that we would be humble and that we would be filled with you and thankful today for our salvation. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen.